So there I stood at my front door as my client left yelling, is it too early to go somewhere else today to get this fixed? Oh, not to mention my neighbor was in their backyard listening to the whole thing and I had a client, brand new client waiting on my couch in my basement for me to do their hair. I was beyond humiliated. I was brand new two weeks into living in a new city and things were not going the way I had hoped. I had a good track record with my clients back home. How could I be not having success in this new city? I was humiliated, frustrated, and completely embarrassed. I know what it's like to have unhappy clients. Not just that one, but over the last two decades in this industry, I've seen my fair share. More than I'd like. And I used to freak out and panic about it. I remember the day that I had an NHL hockey player's wife in my chair who did not like her hair. And I'm pretty sure both her and I were sweating buckets and for sure I was having a nervous poo in the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle these situations. I didn't really even learn how to because I always banked on best case scenario. So I'm excited to bring you this video today with my five steps on how to deal with an unhappy client that can diffuse the situation, that can have you walking away feeling good about yourself, not feeling defeated and like a failure like I felt for the majority of the last two decades and have you feeling happy and excited about moving forward in your career, not questioning if you should quit the industry. So if that sounds good to you, hit that like button and the subscribe and the bell, and let's get to this video. Buckle up, friend. Step number one, empathy. Oh, this isn't always so easy when someone is unhappy with us or they're frustrating us or they're just maybe annoying us. When, a, when you have an unhappy client, normally our defenses go up and we wanna defend ourselves. I get it. But empathy can be your very best friend. And let me get into this a little bit more. So we as human beings want to feel, at our core, we wanna feel seen, heard, and valued. We wanna be understood. I'm curious, have you ever felt like someone's misunderstood you? or feeling frustrated that someone's just not getting what you're trying to say? I know I have way too many times. And so empathy can be this magic wand that can really help diffuse an unhappy client. Empathy at its best is saying to somebody, I understand what you're saying. I, I understand how you're feeling. I, I know what that's like. So the best thing you can do is empathize with your unhappy client. As soon, and I'm not saying concede to their demands. I'm not saying give in to what they're asking for. I'm saying just say, I understand and I feel you. I hear you. you that doesn't mean you're giving in to them. And that's a whole nother video for another day of what to do when that happens. But when you're dealing with an unhappy client, when they're going irate or off the walls, empathizing with them is huge. Saying, I understand. That must be super frustrating for you. Tell me more about that. Remaining calm is a really important thing we do. When someone comes at us a little bit hyped up like this and like, I don't like it, or you can just sense that and they're unhappy, like I said, we get that defense mechanism going. We often want to blame them. Well, you came in, and even if that's the case, by the way, like you came in with this, you asked for this, that's not the first line of, first, not first line of defense, that's not the right word, that's not the first thing I want you to lead with. That does not make anyone feel good. The first thing I want you to do is have them feel seen, heard, and valued by empathizing with them. So I hear what you're saying. That sounds super frustrating. Oh, I get it. I, I know I remember when I had my hair done, it didn't turn out how I was picturing it. Or I remember a time when I thought I wanted red hair and when I had it, I didn't like it. I remember that feeling and so I get it. That empathy can go such a long way and help bring your client's emotions down. Have them go, oh, okay, I'm freaking out. Like as someone with anxiety, I know when I freak out when someone goes, let's just take a moment, I can kind of get more rational. And we've all had those clients. And maybe if you haven't, I hope you never do. Those clients that are like just so irrational and we're like, what in the what? Empath bringing empathy into the conversation at the very beginning is going to be a game changer. So I understand, I feel you. I remember a time when I felt that similar way. That must be so frustrating. You're totally valid in those feelings. I can understand, I get that. Those types of phrases are gonna help bring them back, have them go, okay, they're hearing me. Because I know when someone goes off, they, they don't always, they kind of like black out sometimes if you've ever had one of those clients that completely goes off the handle. 
And this is a way to just stay quiet and go nod, go, I understand. Let them get it all out and try not to take it personally. <laughs> Pro tip, one thing I do every single morning is I make a little bubble around myself, like a pretend bubble, visualization bubble. It's a little woo-woo-y, but just hold, stick with me on this every morning. And I try and puff it out as far as I can as my, in my mind's eye. I try to like push it out and I go, negativity can't touch me. And I think about all the negative comments from clients or family or friends that could be gossiped about me or the fear of what I might be, might be being said about me out there. And I picture it coming on the outside of the bubble and bouncing off so that I don't absorb it because I know you're someone that's exactly like me that you stress about what people are thinking or what they possibly might be saying and you fear that. And so you tend to want to avoid any and all situations. But this little pro tip of negativity can't touch me and picturing the bubble has really helped me stand up for myself in business and deal with unhappy clients. Step two, make eye contact. This one's huge, 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 huge. Because people, when they're going off, they're all usually like, all over the place and like this, this, and this. And if you just sit there and don't say anything, so, you know, empathize with them, but if they're not coming down, just sit there quietly until they make eye contact with you, until they realize that you're a human being there. Now, if an unhappy client's doing it through text or DM, that's another situation. But if you just see the bubble going, the, 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 they're typing, just stay quiet until they stop, honestly. And, but I would say if it's in real life, make eye contact with them. Let them see that you're a human sitting there waiting to help them. Step three, ask them what would make the situation better. I actually did this in a scenario once when I was ending up, well, when I actually ended up firing a client, but she was being irate. It was not going well. And I just said, what would you feel is fair in this situation? And it was a legitimate question. And here's the cool thing about it is oftentimes when you ask something, somebody, what would you feel is fair in this situation, especially when I know there's countless different scenarios with this, but it was an occasion. And it, for example, this was an occasion of my client um, no showing me and then saying she was okay with the cancellation fee and then unwilling to pay the full price of the service. And so I said, I explained it to her very politely and professionally and I said, look, when you no show without any advance warning, I have an empty schedule and that's the way my business stays afloat. And so knowing that I was unable to bring someone else in because there was no notice given, knowing that what would you feel is fair in this situation? So asking someone what they feel would be fair often can get them to go into your shoes for a second. When you lay it out factually, not emotionally. Do not bring emotion into this. This is a business thing you are doing in your business. It's really hard not to get overtaken by emotions. But what I want you to do is just lay out the facts for them, whatever's going on. You know, you came in asking for blonde hair. We got you blonde. I realized that maybe, you know, once it's on you, you're not really liking it. But knowing that I gave you what you asked, what would you feel is fair? Or, you know, if there's like, if it's, an, if it's a situation where a client, you know, maybe there was a bleed mark, then I would say like, hey, I totally get that. I see that now. Like, come on in and let me fix it. Don't worry. I do not stress. I got you. You got this. So there's both sides to it where you can like kind of enforce your policies and your boundaries in your business. Or you can let them know, don't worry about it. I got you. I see that. I don't know how I missed that. I apologize. I want to make it better. Come back in. But I remember when I asked this client, like, what would you feel is fair and laid it out to her? It can go to one of two ways, really. They can go, they can ask for something and you'll go, oh my goodness, I was going to give them way more. Oftentimes people will ask for less than what you'd be willing to give them. And so, or they'll ask for something different and you might have offered something else. Like maybe someone's like, you know what? The color just doesn't feel right. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do a whole nother full head of highlights. Like <laughs> what in the what? I don't have time for this. It's the holidays. And you're thinking like, how the heck? But when you say, what would you feel is fair? And they say, I think I'd just like to tone it down a little bit. All of a sudden, you've saved yourself time and money. You were going to offer them something above and beyond. And I think that's a wonderful thing about you is that you're willing to go that extra mile. But sometimes we are misguided or we think too much for our client instead of asking them what they actually want. So what would you like to happen in this situation? What would you feel is fair? Moving forward, how would you want to approach this? Find out where they're at and this is going to help you navigate the rest of this. Like I said, 
empathizing, making eye contact and asking them what they feel is fair is huge, what they would want in this. Cause then all of a sudden you get their insight. We often overcompensate. Hello people pleaser. I know you're there too with me. We overcompensate and we actually make them less happy and more unhappy by offering the wrong things because we just go like 10 steps ahead instead of taking the next step and asking them. So I can't stress this step more, more. I can't, I can't stress this step enough that asking them what they, how would they like to move forward? What would they feel is fair? How would they like to proceed? What would be adequate compensation? How can you help them? Those sorts of things are going to be huge and going to give you feedback and they're going to not only feel seen, heard and valued, but they're going to go, Oh, they actually care. Like so many, like oftentimes so many unhappy clients, they're just jumping to worst case scenario, ready for a fight. Right. I don't know if you've seen, I think it was like a TikTok back in the day where a person was like, like they were like playing it out and the person's like, I want a refund. And the person's like, okay, no problem. They're like, da 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 da. And the person was the, the customer service person was so kind. And at the end, she's like, did you just want to fight about this? And the customer's like, yeah, actually. And so that's like, it's so true. Sometimes people are just like wanting that conflict or wanting that fight. And I'm not saying too conceited. That was like a jokey TikTok that was out there. But truly, sometimes people are like so um, narrow focused on ready for a fight. Their defenses are up. They're ready to think you're going to say no and slam a door in their face. And when you show up with this empathetic, kind, like, let me hear you out. I understand. You look at them in the eye and you say, what could we do moving forward? How could I make you happy? All of a sudden, people are like, whoa, you could really. I've done in the past. I've had clients who were so frustrated. And then that's turned them around. And they never complained again. They be, turn into lifelong raving fans of mine. So these things are really, really important when dealing with unhappy clients. All right, on to the next step. Okay, step four is decide how you want to move forward. This is a tough one because I know sometimes enforcing policies and sticking to your boundaries has been tough, right? You often are run by your business rather than your business running you. Does that sound familiar? And so I want you to get that feedback from your client. How would you like to proceed? What would you feel is fair? But I want you to decide what's best for your business as well as what's best from the situation at hand. Did you make a communication error? Did you over promise? Are you at fault for something or could you have done better? Ask yourself these things. Now also don't just don't default to fault. People pleasers tend to do that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me, I, yeah, I must have misunderstood. If you remember for a fact, this is like people pleasers, us, we tend to get taken advantage of a little bit more because of our kindness. People abuse that. And so I want you to go, what is right in this situation? This person, what are the facts? This person came in and asked for fire engine red hair. I gave them fire engine. I know this is an extreme example. I gave them fire engine red hair and now they're saying it's too red but we looked at pictures, looked at the swatch, the hair matched the swatch at the end. Like if it's all lining up, then you should decide what is best for my business. And I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer here. Is this a client that could refer more people? Do you want to do this? If you're going to concede and get them in for a fix or do something for them that you actually feel is going against policy, I'm not saying don't do it, but communicate it with them. Say, you know what? I actually don't make a habit of making these fixes when it's not really a fix. It's more of a to changing your mind, but I'm happy to do this because I really care about you. I enjoy having you in and I just want to let you know I'm willing to make this one time exception. And so by communicating that to them, that makes a huge difference because then they know next time it's not going to be possible because I see too many hairstylists, myself included, in the past saying, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll fix it. And then it turns into this snowball effect of every time they come in for a color or every time they come in for a cut, there's always something that they need touched up three to four weeks later or two weeks later or a week later. And so by letting them know you're willing to bend the rules this time, like I said, I'm not giving you black and white. I want you to feel good. Only you know your business in your situation. So unless I'm working with you one-on-one -on -one in some way, I don't want to tell you like this is the only way. You got to trust your gut. But if you're going to bend the rules, communicate it to them ahead of time so that you're not stuck in this cycle later on. But I want to tell you what happened with my client. So I emailed her. I said, what would you feel is fair in this situation? Like you're not willing to pay the full can You're not willing to pay the whole cost of the appointment, but I was out that time and money. I couldn't get someone to come in. 
what would you feel is fair? And she went, I feel like 80 bucks would be fair, right? Like not the, and the cost of the appointment was over $300. And so I was stuck with this decision to be like, what do I decide now? Do I cave in and have her only pay that much? The history with this client was actually not that great. I had been caving in for quite a long time. The reason why I know how to help you with this stuff is because I've done it wrong a lot. So I had to think, how do I want to move my business forward? If I cave in to her, cave in, if I, you know, decide to go with what she suggests and not charge her the full amount, is this just letting her continue to walk all over me? Do I want to continue to have her as a client in my chair? Mm, not really. She'd been pushing boundaries and I'd been letting her get myself get walked all over. So how I responded, which is contradictory to what you may think, but I just respond to her saying, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair, right? Oh my gosh, but wait, listen, I said, but moving forward, this is where our professional relationship will end. I've loved having you in. Thank you for your support of my business over the years. And I look forward to bumping into you and seeing you around. So here's the thing. I couldn't chase her for the total cost of that, that appointment. How would I ever collect that money? I'm not going to be able to. I wanted to be able to move through these motions professionally and politely. And so I decided to let her know like, here, yeah, I'll give you what you want, but this is where our relationship ends. So that's one example of how you can decide to how to move forward. I could have responded like, unfortunately, I can't do that. You're going to have to pay in full. And then I probably wouldn't have ever heard from her again. And it would have been kind of out in the abyss and whatever. But I decided I wanted to kind of close the, the door, close the book and the chapter on a good note. Would it be awkward if I saw her out? Probably. But I wanted to make sure that I felt good about being, being like, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair, but this is where it ends. So I want you to think about a situation and when you're in the next situation with an unhappy client, because there's no way to avoid an unhappy client for the rest of your career, right? Or if you do, that's amazing. And tell me your secret. Like we can't control because so many times unhappy clients aren't a factor with their hair. It's something externally going on with their life. I've had clients not like their hair because they've gained 10 pounds, right? Because they think that it's going to change them or, you know, they've suffered a loss in their life and they project it. We project things onto our appearance a lot. So know that unhappy clients aren't necessarily to do with something you've done. And I want you to decide moving forward what to do that's going to serve your business best. And that might be, you know, deciding to go with what they ask for or saying, you know what, I appreciate that point of view. Unfortunately, that'll put my business in a tough place, so I can't do that. Here's what I can offer you or here's what we can do. Or like myself, be like, I'm happy to honor what you feel is fair, but moving forward, this is where we end. So I want you to think about how you can decide to move forward. All right, on to step numero five. -o. <laughs> step five. Step five, I want you to execute your decision with grace and compassion. Here's the thing is that you want to do it so that they don't feel that you're doing something to them or at them, but you're doing it for them, right? With kindness, compassion, empathy, doing, you're not doing something to them or at them, but you're doing it for them. So instead of being like, sorry, that doesn't work, or no, I'm not fixing that, or that doesn't work, be like, you know what? I care about you, and I really want you to love your hair, but I can tell that I'm not the person that's going to be able to make you happy with your hair. So what's best moving forward is that I refer you to this person or you get your hair tweaked and fixed with this person because I know that they're going to be able to better serve you, right? I want you to be happy. So showing them grace, giving them love and compassion, putting that empathy back in there, being kind, you know, being, being the bigger person in this scenario is really important. The way you leave and end this and the way you execute this, showing them that you're doing something for them rather than to them or at them is going to make a world of a difference of how they move forward. Could they still be pissed with your answer of no or unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do that? Yes, but you can walk away with your head high knowing that you've dealt with it well. Also, you can diffuse a lot of anger when you let them know that you're like, I can tell that you know, you're know you unhappy with your hair right now or I can tell that you're unhappy with your haircut or I can tell that you know X, Y, Z, fill in the blank and I don't want you to feel that way. That bums me out. And so what I've decided is moving forward, this is how we're, what we're going to do. And this way you're going to get taken care of in the process. I know you're going to be able to be happy. And that's the most important thing is I want you to be happy. When dealing with an unhappy client, you don't want to get too caught up in the logistics and all the tiny little details. Focus on them being content and happy. 
And so after hearing all these things, after empathizing with them, after making eye contact with them, asking them how they want to move forward, and then deciding how you're going to move, actually move the situation forward, delivering that news with grace and compassion is going to be huge, 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 huge. And so this one's really tricky. It's easy to understand. It's easy to comprehend. It's easy to go, yes. But a lot of times students of mine go, but like, what do I actually say? And I get it. It's hard. It takes practice. But I always want you to ask yourself, how can I communicate that I'm doing something for them, how I'm trying to make them happy instead of doing something to them or at them? Like, you're not allowed back in the salon. I don't want you as a client. Like, and you know what? I really want to make sure you're happy. And so I actually have a friend that works at this salon and I've already talked to her and she's willing to take you on. So this will be our last appointment or, you know, that appointment that you had last week was your last appointment, but moving forward, you can go see this person here. See, it's like the same situation of uninviting them back or telling them you're not going to get what you want, but showing them that's, that you're taking care of them, that you're actually doing something for them. It'll still sting for the client. Rejection isn't fun anyway, but delivering that news or delivering the news of I'll fix it, but with kindness and compassion because I know there's been times that you've said yes to a client but you've resented them and been angry, right? Sure, yeah, come on in, I'll fix it, right? I know, I know I've done that <laughs> way too many times and then been a little bit snarky with them when they've come in and that's not good for business and I know we're in this business that's very relational too, so it's tough but I want you to deliver whether it's bad news or good news that you're going to do it but I don't want you to be resentful and angry about it either. Deliver the news with kindness and compassion and empathy of how you're going to move forward. Not resentment, anger, or frustration, or being short or abrupt, you know? Those sorts of things make a big difference. Also, even if you're uninviting someone back, or if a client decides not to continue with you, with you, they might still have really positive things to say about you when they talk to their friends and family. Or if this is happening through DMs or emails or text, which I highly suggest if you can, I know it's like the way of the world and I know that's how we communicate a lot, but if you can have face-to-face, -face, it's way better. Or even over the phone, it's so much better. You can hear tone, you can understand what someone's saying. You're not reading into like, they said this, do they mean it this way or do they mean it this way, right? Like there's so much room for miscommunication in text or email. And when you're dealing with sensitive topics like unhappy clients, there's so much more assumption that's made. If you can do it on the phone, that is going to be your golden ticket. But also, if it's through text or email, if you deal with this with kindness, compassion, and empathy, showing them you're not doing something to them or at them, but you're doing it for them, and you deliver it well, when if they're frustrated and they go to show their friends, look at this, look what she wrote, their friends will go, that's really well written, and that's really nice, actually. And their friends could be like, you know, the not really what they want to hear, but being like, no, they actually did that really well, and I get it. So then you still are looking professionally and polite in the whole scenario. So I want you to remember these five steps and go through them next time you have an unhappy client. They help and you can pull some of them out and navigate it how you want, but this is truly going to help bring a lot of peace, less anxiety in your business and make you feel more confident and respected like the professional that you are. So a little bonus step here is I, at the end of this, I want you to be freaking proud of yourself. This, I'm doing this because I have some notes here. <laughs> this is not easily done. No, I wanna say it's easily done, but it's hard to actually go through. I want you to give yourself a good old pat on the back for doing it. Be proud of yourself. This is not, it's in theory, it's easy, but in actuality, it takes an amazing person such as yourself to do it. And I know you've got it. I know you're going to do it. I know you're capable of it and I'm here to cheer you on. So next time an unhappy client comes, I want you to shoot me a message. Let me know that you're walking through the five steps. I want to cheer you along. I want you to know that I am here supporting you and encouraging you from the sidelines. You got this. You are fully capable of this. I know. And so you, I cannot wait to hear from you. Let me know if this has been helpful and if you're going to try this in the comments below. I know conversations with clients are tough. I get it. And if you want to stop stressing out about every single, what feels like a confrontational conversation with a client, especially when they're unhappy, but maybe it's also about raising your prices. I know it's like, you know that you should be charging more, you know you're undercharging, but actually having the conversation stresses you out. 
I actually have something for you. If you click the link below, I have a complete email template on how to break the news to your clients that you're raising your prices. It's called Raise Your Prices, Not Your Anxiety. It's 100% free. I made it for you because I wish I would have had something like this. I had no idea how to navigate this kind of communication, how, not, how to deliver news that my prices were going up that wouldn't make my clients unhappy and then have to go through the five steps. So if you wanna avoid the five steps of, of dealing with an unhappy client from a price increase, go get my Raise Your Prices, Not Your Anxiety. It's completely free down below. It's in the, in the description. You're gonna love it. It has been a game changer for so many stylists. Before you go, can I ask one thing of you? I hope you enjoyed this, I think you did. So why don't you subscribe and share this with a friend that you know would like it. I know we all need to stop stressing less. We also need to come together as a community more. So subscribe, hit that bell so you get reminders of my new videos each and every Monday morning coming at you. And while you're here, check out these videos. You are going to love them.